Let's come to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we acknowledge you are our God. Lord, we acknowledge that nothing we could do could earn our salvation. It is a gracious gift from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross to save us, to pay the price for our sin, who rose again on the third day to conquer death, to give us that great gift of eternal life. Let us never waste this. Let us always cherish this gift of life that you have given and won for us. We thank you, Lord, for all the things that happen in our life. Good, bad, happy, sad, hard, easy. Whatever it is, Lord, we thank you for it. We thank you that you use everything in our lives to grow us. To make us more like Jesus Christ, your son. We pray for our world, Lord God, and... We hear even more astronomical figures of cases of COVID overseas and deaths overseas. We pray for the families who are affected by this, Lord. We pray that the vaccination schedule would happen and would be safe and would help us um, against this virus, Lord. We pray for our leaders as they make decisions. May all our world leaders and our country's leaders and our state's leaders and our council's leaders, Lord, be wise. We pray that they would know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour. But know that this is not always the case. So we pray that they would lead with servant hearts. They would lead with wisdom. Lord, we pray for our church and our church family, Lord. We want to lift up those at our aged care centres at McGowan Lodge, at Sundale, various places in Sundale, um, and especially at Rod Boller Centre this morning. Lord, lockdown is hard for us to take, and yet, compared to what's happening in the world right now, lockdown is probably pretty easy. But we know it's not easy for everyone to be separated from family or friends who might visit. So be with each one, Lord God. Again, Lord, we thank you for all that's happening in our lives. We pray for the Chinese church and Pastor Kathy and her husband Richard as they minister to the Chinese in our community of the Sunshine Coast, especially those here in Nambour. And again, Lord, we ask for you to bless this ministry, to multiply it. We pray for Pinga, Lord, who gave her life to the Lord just a couple of weeks ago and was baptised on Easter Sunday. That you would be in her and you continue to grow her and make her a great witness for her family, Lord. Father, we, we pray the prayer that Jesus Christ has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us, Lord, our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture today comes from two separate passages, Matthew chapter 28, verses 11 to 15, and John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31, if you're following along. We'll start at Matthew chapter 28, verse 11. And this is about the guards' report. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. We turn now to John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, 
with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with what he breathed, with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger in his side, uh, where the nails were, and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So we let God's word really dwell in our hearts and minds. Let us continue to worship with that great song, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Let's worship together. <laughs> 